Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday to you. Uh, as a reminder, my name is Karen Dubin. I am the Chief Operating Officer and one of the main facilitators for Sweet Institute. And I am here to, in this conversation we've been having over the last several weeks about the transformation of mental health through social work and through social work power. And we've been launching these conversations, uh, all of which are going to lead to a panel discussion that we're going to be having um, in March, uh, all to talk about what it is to trans uh, transform uh, the mental health system uh, to the benefit of all of the people that we are called to serve and doing a, in doing that through social work, because we know as social workers that we are um, we are in all the different domains of, of, of service provision and uh, where we're, our boots are on the ground, we uh, hold many different forms of leadership. Um, whether it's intentional or unintentional forms of leadership, uh, we are in every single domain that there is around um, uh, around uh, care for individuals uh, in 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 communities and uh, individually as well. So why not it be about the transformation of mental health through social work? Uh, since we do have this uh, this um, very unique, I think vantage point uh, of being able to see how all the systems run or don't run um, and what we would be interested in recreating. And so we've been having some very interesting conversations uh, and we're gonna continue on in those conversations in our uh, social work power certificate course. We've been having these really interesting conversation about what it means first sort of really looking at there's these two prongs that are operating at the same time. One of these prongs is all about um, who we are as social workers, what our identity is as social workers, how we really are clear or not about uh, why we are doing what we are doing. What does it mean for us overall? Um, and then the other prong being about, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of transforming mental health and what is what does it look like? What are the barriers? What are, you know, what what comes up uh, for all of us as we begin to think about the transformation of mental health through social work? So in these conversations we've been having, we've been talking mostly about, uh, we've been using uh, one of our articles to really uh, set the stage and frame this uh, conversation. And then when we uh, are back here again on Wednesdays, the conversation is a much more organic one um, about what power means in the context of social work. So to come to this uh, article again, uh, last time we spoke about <clears throat> understanding the identity and what is our identity. And we had a couple of people really begin to share what that was for them um, in terms of recognizing what our true identity is. And, and when you think about what is your identity as a social worker, what does that mean? Well, you know, and it's the different and and is it the different categories by which we exercise who it is that we are as social workers? Is it something else that's just intuitive to us that relates to a sense of social justice that we have, you know, or is it this other thing that um, remains un unknown and undetected that but is uh, uh, in many levels just inherent to who it is that we are? So um, so that's where we landed last time we met with this understanding their identity and these being about um, the series of steps that it does take to transform mental health. And the other is about uncovering their power and uh, discovering the, the often hidden and latent, latent power within themselves is crucial. So within ourselves, you know, these ideas of power and what it means to exercise our own power and you know, and how we, you know, there's sometimes I think for me, there is a discomfort in um, in the power that I might have or in the power that I might have to exercise in, um, in, in whatever roles that I may take. And so there's this like, you know, sometimes it, it shows up for me anyway, as guilt um, in having any sort of power, especially in the context of the kind of work that I do and maybe how I'm perceived uh, by my clients. Um, sometimes it's uh, it's the tendency to defer to authority, uh, authority to make whatever decisions because of the inherent nature of hierarchy within our fields. 
Um, and sometimes it's just an insecurity. And we talked a while ago about imposter syndrome. And sometimes it's just a, an insecurity about whether or not I have the right to exercise whatever power uh, that I have. And then there's the other parts of it that know that you know, this isn't about force. There's a difference, of course, between uh, power and force. And this isn't about force. It isn't about pressure. Um, it's about who I am as a powerful human being. And how is it that I stand in that power to be able to effectuate the kinds of changes that are important in the world? Um, and so it's, it's, and so that there's, and so there's like, the roles that I have taken and the roles that many of us have taken, you know, that hidden sense of power where people um, have a degree of comfort because we do take uh, on these roles that are powerful roles that help in that transformative change. Um, and then there are the times where we are provided with power or, you know, uh, that allows us to be able to do this uh, in, in different kinds of ways. And you know, I know for me, some of the the uh, ways in which I think that I have executed my own sense of power is by sharing it, you know, and by a collaboration with other entities that are sometimes not entities that would typically be ones that I would align with. And then and and ending up with it being a very sort of powerful opportunity for our clients. Um, so you know, be in the conversation with us. What does what does power look like for you? You know, and this again also adds to harnessing personal power. Number three, learning to channel and harness this power effectively as a key aspect of the process. And so what what is that power for you? Is it hidden? Is it is it more explicit? Do you is it what's your level of understanding, comfort, whatever? And and then like how do you then channel or harness that power in order to really effectuate the kinds of changes that you want to? How have you been doing that all along in your career? Maybe knowingly or not knowingly, but let's hear from you. Put your uh, comments in the chat box. Uh, let's hear from you about how you understand what your own power is as I continue to explore my own and, and uncover all the things that it may mean for me. Um, I'd love to be able to hear from you. So join us again in the conversation. We look forward to all of your comments. Put something below in, in, in the chat. And, uh, and as always, we look forward to hearing from you soon, soon and having you join us on Fridays from 3.30 to 5 as we collaborate and join in with other social workers to have these really, really dynamic conversations.